Does Quran mention beautiful spouses in paradise? Yes, he does. There's no hiding from it. And actually, when I was in my exploring religion phase, this is one of the things that I couldn't answer for myself. Why does God mention this? And actually, of course, none of you sisters have this question, but you know sisters that have this question. Brother, Quran talks about these spouses for men in paradise. What do women get? None of you have that question, of course, because you know someone who does. Right? So I'm just talking to that someone. You can tell them about their confusion when we're done with this discussion. Because uh, <laughs> never, never has a sister come to me and said, I have this problem. She says, my cousin, my friend, there's a sister I know who was asking me, and I was wondering how I could answer her. Like, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll play along. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so, but the question actually arose in my mind too. What's the, what's the deal with these kinds of like sensual rewards and beautiful women and all of this stuff? And they're physically being described too. This surah actually minimally describes them physically. But even then, why? And I was kind of seeking the answer and rahimahullah I spoke with. I had, a, I had very brief conversations with this man, Dr. Asfar Ahmed. Very briefly did I get to personally meet him. And one of those, he's a very intimidating personality, rahimahullah. He passed away, and he was actually visiting New York, and he's sitting there, and the first time I saw him without his hat on, sitting on the couch, and one of, my, one of the uncles, Amr Khusab's house, he's sitting there, and he's lost in thought. He's like, he's got he had like Pat Riley slick hair back, and I was like, yeah, that's scary. So I'm just sitting next to him, awkward silence, and of all the things I could have come, I had so many questions. I was like, so, why does Allah talk about Hud in paradise? Oh God, remember that? What have I done? <laughs> That's all he knew of me. Okay. <laughs> so, so he tells me something. This is his own insight, but I found it profound. He said that, and he, added, he said it from one perspective, and then actually an elder that I love and respect a lot, again in New York, and shared with me another perspective, a piece of wisdom that I've, it satisfied me at least. I don't know if it'll satisfy you, but I'll share what I found to be satisfying to me. He said, young men in a society, men in a society that are exposed to, to fahsha all the time, the thing that the Prophet fears for his ummah is shamelessness the most. And our religion compared to any other is the most conservative and the most restricting when it comes to interactions between men and women. From dress code, to the kinds of conversations you can have, to, the, to khalwa, to being alone with a non-mahram, to the settings and you know, gatherings and things like that. It has the most restrictions. After all, you guys haven't gone through it, but if you get a chance, go back to the recordings and go through Surah An-Nur. Surah An-Nur talks about the, even the code of people coming and knocking on your door, that, that they shouldn't just walk into your house. Let the women make the arrangements and be in a separate place and all of that. Like, there's like a proper code. And so much so that there are hours of the, of the day where your children can't walk into the bedroom. They have to knock outside. You have to have, you have, to have code put in your home. For, for gender interaction. It's pretty, pretty amazing stuff. How, you know, boys after a certain age or kids after a certain age can't share a blanket. They can't even share a blanket with each other. There are so many incredible restrictions about this stuff. There are so many precautions about this stuff in our religion. It's, it's kind of uh, uh, something to wonder about. And then the exact opposite is described in Jannah. Right? This is a young man, he's got no restrictions, he's got beautiful spouses and this and that, and they're this beautiful and that beautiful, and they're, you know, they're, they're, their attributes are being described. And, the, and, and uh, Dr. Saab rahimahullah said, this is precisely why. This young man is going to go to college and he's going to keep his eyes low, and there's going to be a girl barely dressed, he's going to say, hey, how you doing? And he's not going to look back, he didn't say it that way, but he's not, you know, he's not going to look back and he's going to say, Allah has better for me. No, Allah has better for me, Allah has better for me. And he's just going to keep himself safe. Even though his raging hormones inside are asking him to, his eyes are begging to look. His curiosity is begging. The opportunity is there. The, the freedom is there. The, you know, the, 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 the youth is there. The energy is there. The looks are there. Everything is there for him. But he says, no, I'm going to hold back. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to even take one step in that direction. Allah has better for me. All his friends are heading in that direction and he doesn't. And then Allah, it's only a matter of Allah's brilliant justice that in Jannah, the drinks that we were forbidden, He offers. The joys we denied ourselves, Allah offers and says, look how you held yourself back, here you go, enjoy. Go ahead. I've opened that door for you. 
So it's actually the reversal of the, the same restrictions Allah has put on us in this dunya. That's why haya is so important here. You want to party in Jannah, you better watch your haya here. Allah doesn't deny that we have temptations. He doesn't deny that we have thoughts. He doesn't deny that, you know, waswasa comes to us all the time. You know, there's, read psychology on, you know, on how many times men think about these things in a day, the average man. It's, 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 you can't deny this, you know, that it's there. That Allah put it inside us. Zuyina lil nas, hubbu shahawat minan nisa, number one. But Allah will allow that to be exercised in Jannah in this way. Now, the second issue is Allah described this for men, how come He didn't describe this such a thing, equivalent for women. We get multiple wives, how come they don't have multiple husbands, etc., etc., if you want to be really crude about it. So, this was a- another bit of wisdom. It was actually, I was asked to do an experiment at Sunday school. I was asked to conduct an experiment. It was an experiment with a bunch of teenage boys and a bunch of teenage girls. And to both, the question to be asked was, so if you could have anything you want, as many times as you want, without any restrictions, nobody will find out, you won't get any trouble, and it's not going to be, you're not even religiously liable. You could have whatever you want right now, what would it be? Okay? What would it be? And so like about 100 boys are being asked that are teens, and 100 girls are being asked that are teens. The boys have an ijma in the ummah. <laughs> There's no like variation. I mean, other than spelling errors, there are, there are no, <laughs> there's no diversity in the answers. The interesting response actually comes from the girls. And by the way, the boys saying that, it confirms what Allah Himself said, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zuyina lil nasi hubbu shahawati min nisa Men were programmed with desire for women. Allah beautified it in them. Done. And just proof of that. The girls were the interested, interesting answers. Can we have five more minutes? <laughs> just a couple more minutes. Just two more, just two, two more minutes. They hand you the paper. No, no, can I have it back? Can I have it back? Just, I, I just thought of something else. Crossing it over. Crossing it over again. And then multiple answers. I can't think of one thing. My favorite answer that was given by multiple sisters, not all of them, but multiple. It depends. <laughs> It's too good. It's too good. Other, I just want to be with my mom. Some said a pony. Some, like, all kinds of answers. You know, the man I love. I got all kinds of... But it wasn't one answer. The point is it wasn't one answer. Allah Azza wa Jal made us emotionally monochrome. We're just one way. Overwhelmingly. I mean, there are unique individuals that love books more than they love women or you know there are those <laughs> how do you do it how do you do it okay but overwhelmingly he made us one way and so Allah described it now I don't want to appease to sisters this is my own conviction and I I'm not shy, personally, I don't think I'm shy to explain what Allah Azza wa Jalla does. We have to be true to Allah's word. We're not here to make anybody happy or upset. We're just here to explain what, to the best of my understanding, what Allah Azza wa Jalla says. Okay? In my personal opinion, the rewards of women described in Jannah are actually more eloquent. They're more eloquent. I'll share with you an Arabic expression you might be familiar with. Rubba sukutin. Rubba sukutin, I don't know, the quiz is on Monday. <laughs> Rubba sukutin, ablahu min kalamin. Perhaps silence speaks more loudly than speech. Allah Azza wa Jal is silent on this, not to say that there are no rewards, but they're beyond words. And this happens in the Qur'an as a matter of fact. There are rewards for different kinds of deeds. But sometimes there are deeds that are so am- magnificent to Allah that they can't even be put in words. So what does Allah say about those kind of deeds? فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ Then the compensation of such a deed is on Allah. Allah will take care of it. He doesn't even say gardens and rivers and spouses. It doesn't, it's beyond description. So He just says, I'll take care of them. It's on me. That's the reward, by the way, incidentally. That indescribable reward is for someone who forgives somebody. Even if they have had the power to take revenge and they still forgave, then that person gets a reward that can't even be described. Allah just says, I'll take care of him. It's on Allah. Allah will take care of him. Subhanallah. Now, 
for women's rewards not to be described as not to take away, but to actually elaborate, further leave to the imagination. And incidentally, no Muslim believer, man or woman, should feel like they're going to be shortchanged. Get to Jannah, you won't be disappointed. What am I going to get though? I don't know if I'll like it. You'll like it. What's the proof you'll like it? Surat Fussilat. Surat number 41. Allah Azza wa Jal says to all of humanity, وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَشْتَهِي أَنفُسُكُمْ You will have whatever you desire. You'll have, that's open to men and women. Whatever you want will be there. And then some. And then some. وَلَكُمْ فِيهَا مَا تَدْعُونَ And whatever you might come across, later might pop in your head. Uh, you place an order for something later on. Oh wait, 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 but I wanted that too. Fine, you can have that too. You can't just, it's not like you already placed the order, it's non-refundable. You're stuck with it. No, 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 you can change your order. You can order something else. Great. That, that door is open to both men and to women. 